हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी द सेकंड पॉइंट ऑफ आर फर्स्ट चैप्टर ऑब्जेक्टिव्स एंड फंक्शंस ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम सो फर्स्ट वी विल सी द ऑब्जेक्टिव्स ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम इन द लास्ट वीडियो लेक्चर्स वी हैव सीन द प्राइमरी गोल एंड द सेकेंडरी गोल ऑफ द ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम सो द फर्स्ट ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ द ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम is to make the computer system convenient to use in an efficient manner second objective to hide the details of the hardware resources from the users as we have seen in the last lecture the diagram which shows that the hardware is used only by the operating system the user cannot directly use the hardware the third objective of operating system to provide users a convenient interface to use the computer system fourth objective to act as an intermediary between the hardware and its users making it easier for the users to access and use other resources fifth objective to manage the resources of a computer system the resources of the computer system are the different parts of the computer system for example the monitor the keyboard the processor and other output devices like printers microphone speakers etc so the operating system have to manage all these resources sixth objective to keep track of who is using which resource granting resource request and mediating conflicting request from different programs and users seventh objective to provide efficient and fair sharing of resources among users and programs so these are the seven objectives of operating system next we'll move on to the functions of operating system so these are the different functions memory management processor management device management file management security control over system performance job accounting error detecting coordination between other softwares and users we will see each of these functions in detail so the first function of operating system memory management the operating system manages the primary memory or main memory for a program to be executed it should be first loaded in the main memory an operating system does the following activities for memory management keeps track of primary memory that is what part of it are in use by whom what part are not in use in multi programming the operating system decides which process will get memory when and how much allocates the memory when a process request it to do so deallocates the memory when a process no longer needs it or ha has been terminated so in memory management we are going to see both the hard disk memory and also the ram so when we start with a computer and we are executing a program the program is first initially loaded on to the ram so the operating system takes care of which part of the ram is to be used by the user so in this case it is the operating system which allocates the memory to a process for the user suppose you have finished with the program and you have terminated the program the memory which was allocated for that program now has to be released this is known as deallocation of the memory which is again done by the operating system for you so these all things will be discussed later in the next coming up chapters the function of memory management we'll move on to the second function of operating system that is processor management in a multi programming environment 
the operating system decides the order in which processes have access to the processor and how much processing time each process has this function is called process scheduling an operating system does the following activities for processor management keeps track of processor and status of process the program is responsible for this task is known as traffic controller allocates the processor to a process deallocates processor when a process is no longer required so processor management main role is played in multi programming operating systems remember that there is only one processor in the cpu and only one process can execute at a time in a multi programming operating system when a user is executing more than one programs at a time there will be different processes in the memory the operating operating system will decide which process is to be allocated to the cpu and which is to be deallocated this all is taken care by the processor management function of the operating system similarly we'll see this also as a in the later chapters third function of the operating system device management an operating system manages device communication through their respective drivers it does the following activities for device management keeps track of all devices the program is responsible for this task is known as the input output controller decides which process gets the device when and for how much time allocates the device in the most efficient way so in the device management there are the different devices which are connected to our system once again the monitor keyboard printer etc so the operating system takes the input from the keyboard gives the output to the monitor and if we want it gives the output to the printer for printouts so the operating system decides which devices are to be allocated and after the use of this devices it deallocates this devices again we are going to see this same point in the chapter deadlocks next the fourth function of the operating system file management now what is a file so when we keep the related information together in the memory we term it as a file so when we keep all the files together we keep it in a folder or a directory so how these files and directories are kept or stored in the hard disk together is known as the file system which is again managed by the operating system a file system is normally organized into directories for easy navigation and usage these directories may contain files and other di directories an operating system does the following activities for file management keeps track of information location usage status etc the collective facilities are often known as file system decides who gets the resources the operating system decides which file is to be allocated to which user allocates the resources deallocates the resources after the user has finished with using the file it has to deallocate the resource again we are going to see this same point in a separate chapter later on next we'll move on to the next function that is security the operating system uses password protection to protect user data and similar other techniques it also prevents unauthorized access to programs and user data as we all know that all the laptops and mobiles have a pin number or a password this is for the security since we can have our personal data or some secured data on our systems so the most secured operating system is a linux operating system next function of the operating system control over system performance it supervises over all system working to help improve performance next function 
जॉब अकाउंटिंग ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम कीप्स ट्रैक ऑफ टाइम एंड रिसोर्स यूज बाय वेरियस टास्क एंड यूजर्स This information can be used to track resource usage for a particular user. If we are using paid services from the servers, the server's operating system keeps track of which user is using which resources for how much of time and that much of money you have to pay for the usage. Next we'll move on to the next function of operating system that is error detecting aids. operating system constantly monitors the system to detect errors and avoid the malfunctioning of computer system the computer system keeps on supervising the performance of the system so that the system may not crash or it may or the machine may not get hanged next we'll move on to the last function of the operating system coordination between other software and users operating system also coordinates and assign interpreters compilers assemblers and other software to various users of the computer system so at a time if one user is using different softwares the operating system takes care of all the softwares which have been opened and are executing by a user so with this we finish with all the functions of the operating system thank you